everybody, welcome to this episode of the Mayor's Table. I'm Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett. On today's episode, we're going to talk trash right here at the San Juan County Landfill. This is Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett. Thank you for joining us on today's Mayor's Table. With me today are two district managers with Waste Management right here in San Juan County. We have Joe Sanchez. Joe, you've been here before. Thanks for being here again. Thanks for, for coming for the visit. Absolutely. And newly promoted district manager Joshua Van Zandt. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thanks for being here today, guys. We wanted to kind of, we, we've done three of these now, Joe. We've talked about recycling and uh, finding it as an important component of the community just to get some information out there to them on things that are going on in the world of, of trash. I mean, waste management's an important component of the city. I can tell you that because when I get phone calls about trash not being picked up, it's a serious issue. Uh, right. But also the recycling component. And I don't think I've ever been inside the, uh, is it the eco facility? Is that what we call this? The Four Corners Regional Eco Center. All right. So this is where all of the recycled materials come in and it gets sorted and I, we'll kind of talk about some of those things. and. But I wondered if we could, since we're out here at San Juan County Landfill, the landfill is it's owned by San Juan County, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so Waste Management just has a contract as an operator out here? Yes, so the county owns it, and then we have a lifetime contract um, with the county for Waste Management to uh, run the day-to-day. -day lifetime contract? Yes, sir. That's, that's, those are very difficult things to obtain <laughs> in life. <laughs> well, it's a good partnership. Yeah. So as, as the landfill goes, how long have we been bringing our trash because it's, it's all of San Juan County's trash that comes here, is that correct? Yes, sir. So um, we, we serve the Four Corners area. Um, we get trash and waste coming um, from Arizona to Colorado, Utah, and uh, of course here in New Mexico. Um, I, didn't 1988. That, I didn't realize that other states brought their trash here as well. Yes, sir. That's interesting. Okay. So it started in what year? Uh, 1988 is when we took over the contract here in... Uh, okay. And as we... As the landfill goes, I mean, at some point, landfills fill up. Uh, how long do we think this landfill in this area w will be, uh, be able to use it? Um, permanent airspace that we have available right now, um, we anticipate with the volumes that we currently receive, uh, another 90 years of life. Another 90 years. Well, things, we'll see what 90 years looks like between now and then, right? Um, do, do you know, is there another piece of land in San Juan County that's kind of been slated as a potential future site or is that really above our pay grade? Uh, currently right now I know of, I don't know of any uh, slotted area to where the next landfill will be okay. to, to serve this community. So for, for, since 1988 we've been bringing our trash here and I don't remember what year we instituted recycling in the side of the city of Farmington, but how long has this facility been here where we've been, been re, uh, sorting the recycled materials? I do believe this facility was built in 2005 okay. is, is when this facility was uh, constructed. So probably right around the same time that we determined sure. to start doing recycling cans. Yep. Um, and then for, for people who, you know, for example, I can opt in to be a recycler. So I have, I have a recycling can in my house. But let's say that I don't have a recycling can. I could still bring my recyclable goods here. Is that correct? That is correct. There's uh, the facility here at the San Juan County Landfill. We have transfer stations throughout the county that uh, will take recyclables, and then we also have at 101 Spruce Street, we have a recycling center there as well. And I know at Spruce Street, where we filmed a couple times, uh -huh. that's also a place where you can take your recycled glass. Glass. One of your Correct. glass as well. Glass here and there. Those are the two locations in San Juan County that will take glass. Okay. Now, what we have is a single stream recycling program, correct? Correct. So, a single stream means that everything that's recyclable, we put it into one can, it comes up here. And then tell us a little bit about the sorting process, and we'll even go back into some of the things that we find here. And we can see examples of today that don't belong in the recycle cans. Uh, they kind of clog up the system and slow things down. But kind of tell us the process of how the, the trash comes into this area. So Joe's team and the collection side uh, for the residential uh, pickup will then, um, for the co-mingled at the single stream that, that we use here there in Farmington, will all arrive here. And we have two piles behind us. Um, and the pile that you see directly behind us is the co-mingled or single stream um, section. And, and that is where, you know, the plastics, the cardboards, the papers and everything go, in, go inside there. And then the pile next to that is all uh, clean cardboard. 
So we try to segregate the two because we actually bail three separate products here, um, an SOP, uh, shredded paper, commingled, and the cardboard. Okay. So the big, the big shredding trucks, they bring their materials here as well? We do have several commercial trucks that'll bring in like um, the, the shredded paper and then we bail that up. And then um, on some occasions, companies will bag the shredded paper and we'll actually tear bags to put in, uh, on the conveyor. That's really the only product we like, plastic bags. Um, and we'll talk about that with the commingled side of it. And when you put the commingled inside your bins at the house, the plastic bags really um, affect us here when we go to a sorting process. Okay. Let's, we've had a couple of episodes now where we've talked about mm -hmm. some of the things that we're finding in the trash that don't, or in the, in the recycle that don't belong there. Um, why, and maybe we just reiterate some, a few of those things. I, I'm st I still want my sticker, Joe, that shows me what, what is recycled and what's yeah. not. I'll make sure you get one. I thought you yeah, had one already on your can. Um, but the things that are recyclable, obviously we can see them here. We got cardboard, uh, paper, I mean just loose leaf paper. Is that something that's also recyclable, even if it's not shredded? Correct. Okay. That is cardboard, tin, aluminum is probably a big one. Um, all, all, everything that comes in as far as recycling, it's important that it's clean. And what we mean by clean is there's no moisture in it. Uh, there's no leftover food in a food container. I know the last... Uh, Mayor's table we did, you learned about a pizza box. Right. The grease being on a pizza box, uh, as Josh pointed out, that's clean corrugated cardboard. Uh, there's different markets for all these different materials, so that's why we separate it here as much as we can. And then it gets transferred down to Albuquerque to another recycling where they sort it even more. Uh, as the last conversations that we had, uh, the contamination is really the part that we're trying to fight here. Uh, last audit we did here, we were at 24%, I believe, coming in here. Uh, once Josh's team goes through it and sorts everything here, uh, I don't know what the last audit was you did on where you came out at there. It, so in several cases where I, I, I touch on the contamination side of it is, um, so it, if it comes in at 26% contamination, we do a couple audits on the, uh, on the end bale, and we'll actually break a bale open. And some of the things that we may have missed through the audit, like where, where, where water was left inside a uh, water bottle, now, once it goes through that bale and it gets compacted in there, the surrounding material then may be contaminated as well. So if there's good cardboard next to it, that water will squirt out, then it ruins that cardboard. So in, in actually one of our audits, we had um, a worse contamination rate than the 26% coming in, if oh that makes gosh. sense. You know, only because some of those small things that we missed during the initial intake audit. Right. You know, and, and, that, and that fluctuates um, day to day and route to route. Um, some areas are cleaner than, and, and then some um, areas of the city are, are just a little dirtier, just depending on what, what's coming so in. So for the person who's wanting to recycle, I mean, the, the reason I want to recycle is I want to make sure that those products that can be recycled get to be reused and not just going out into the landfill and taking up space. And so taking that extra step at home to clean out the contaminants, I think, is a really key component if that is your goal. Uh, there are certainly those out there who don't want to recycle, and that's, that's, that's fine. But if I really want to do my part, cleaning out the tin cans, letting the water bottles dry out, washing out the milk cartons and letting those dry out, not putting the pizza boxes into the trash can, um, what other things? Well, of course, using plastic bags on your recycle. That's also uh, something that, that hampers the process. Yeah, so, so the, the other really good um, thing is your detergent bottles. You know, those are really hard to wash out. Um, and that's a lot of times we'll see when we break the bale open, that'll be a contributing factor right there. Well, those, saw, the I detergent, saw, yeah. yep. the liquid Downy, detergent bottles. Liquid detergent yeah. bottle going down there. <clears throat> so, well, that's good to know too, because I don't know if I've taken that step to clean out the detergent bottle. Well, yeah. But that's why we're here, right? And so hopefully the, the viewers out there, um, we're, we're learning more, I think, every time. And the more we talk about it, the better we're going to get at it. Um, have we seen an overall improvement in the amount of contamination that's coming in initially? So we have seen a big improvement in the last year that I've been tracking it because uh, we were up in the 30 range about a year ago. So it is coming down. It is getting better. Thank you, uh, residents of Farmington, for uh, doing your part on there. The thing is, uh, as we spoke earlier, the landfill only has a certain lifespan. Mm. Uh, and it's really important that if you think about it, uh, studies have shown that 80% of the stuff that we put in our trash is recyclable in some way, shape, or form, Re recyclable or reusable. Uh, so it's really important that anything that we can do on our part to make this uh, landfill last longer for generations to come, uh, recycling is the easiest thing we can do for that. 
uh, you know, it's good for our environment, it's good for our landfill, and it's good for uh, future generations as well. Sure. So that's really important that we keep trying to clean up our stream, uh, make things easier here. As Josh said, uh, when you bag your recyclables, as you can see right there at the end, of the, there's a bag of uh, recyclables that came in that uh, it's, it's not gonna make it much further down the line before it gets thrown in the trash because we just don't have the manpower or the time to open each and every one of those up to see what's actually inside of it. Uh, and also when that goes through some of our machinery, the grocery bags, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. uh, anything with plastic bag sort of just ties up in our machinery, we have to shut everything down and restart, clean it up, restart back again. And it, uh, it just, it's an extra cost that we don't really need in there. Well, I think the cost component is something that people don't think about when they think about the landfill. Uh, it takes labor, it takes money, it takes space. All those things have a cost associated with them. It takes drivers uh, to bring all the trash here. And so where we have the opportunity to save costs on the, on the um, say, the user's end, I think we should be trying to do that because we don't want our rates to go up. Uh, exactly. We have to negotiate those rates on our contract, I believe, with, the, with waste management. You know, it's every two years. Uh, and then the contract goes out every four or something like that. But, but we want to be able to, to do our part as, as the users, as the customers, to ensure that those costs remain low. And we know recycling, there's a lot of news about recycling out there. Of course, China has basically stopped buying recycling, um, recycled materials from the United States, if, if I understand that correctly. Correct. There's other places that they're looking for that market to grow and, and to shift. Um, but those are things that, you know, when, on the everyday person's probably not thinking about it. Uh, they want to do their part, and I think that's probably the important component is let's do what we can do, uh, starting in our own homes and our businesses, to make sure we're making it cost effective for waste management to do their job out here. And waste management itself is spending a lot of time in research and trying to find other markets and even invest in some other markets for us to be able to recycle those materials in-house ourselves, just because the, it is um, right now with the China embargo and everything going on there right now with the market of recyclables, it's, it's hard to find a place to put it. Um, and a lot of people think that uh, we're doing recycling because it's, it's a profit-making thing for us. It's really not. Uh, recyclables is something we're doing to try to keep our environment safe and uh, keep it clean. So. It certainly would be nice if you made money off of it because then it would be less expensive for us. But, exactly. Um, but, but speaking of just being cost efficient, there are some changes coming up here at the landfill, uh, Josh, dealing with the hours of operation. Um, and I think that's probably an important component for people to know, so maybe you can speak a little bit on that. Yeah, so here in the near future, and we're anticipating probably around mid-July, we're waiting on some final documents to come through um, to uh, help with the operations uh, of the landfill and everything. We've um, worked with the county, and they've, they've uh, authorized us to close on Sundays. You know, so around mid-July or so, um, Sundays, um, we're like one of two landfills in the state that were open on Sundays. Okay. And uh, so we will be closing on Sundays. Well, I think that's good information to know, to know that it's, it's not just us that will be closed on Sundays. And Sunday is your slowest day, is that correct? Y yes, yes. Uh, it, is, it is a slower day um, in receiving the tonnage. Okay. And, but um, uh, San Juan County residents will still have avenues. Um, the, the transfer stations will, will be open that okay. are normally open on Sundays to dispose of. And, and get will Farmington of. residents in that situation be able to utilize the transfer stations? Because I don't think we, do we have a transfer station in Farmington? No, no, we do. no. So, and then if for us to use the county transfer stations, we would have to pay yes. to use those, yes. is that correct? Yes. Okay. So as it exists right now, Monday through Saturday, we bring our bill and our ID. We get one, I don't remember how much we can bring for one so load. So we, we, what we take is the last six months. Um, and then we do verify um, service address with the resident and the person that, that's disposing of the trash. We like to ensure that the individual that is disposing of the trash is the one using that bill. But you'll use the last bill. six months' bills? We, we'll go back the last six months. Okay. Okay. Joe, anything else you want to make sure we add in this episode? Uh, I'd just like to maybe take a look at the back here so that we can see what the final product looks like once the sorting gets done. Because uh, from judging from the pile behind us right now, you'll be amazed at... Uh, what's coming out on the back side of this. Great, let's travel to the back and check out the bales. Sounds good. All right, Joshua Joe, we came to the back of the facility where now all the, the, the recyclables have been sorted. Uh, we can see behind us, we have, we have over here, we have the bales of cardboard. We have the bales of shredded paper. And then um, behind the camera, we have the single stream 
uh, bales as well. So very, very different places that all three of these go to. Am I right? That's correct. Can, I, can you kind of talk a little bit about, um, well, just tell us. I mean, we've got the cardboard here. What, what do you guys do with the cardboard? So the cardboard is currently right now, it's being um, shipped down to Albuquerque to Bauer Propel. You know, so local New Mexicans are um, working in that facility. And what I'm told is that material would then be turned into a new box that you could be receiving from Amazon within the next 45 days. So 45 day turnaround from the product here until we see. <clears throat> hits us. their facility and goes through the process and then a new box is. Good to know. Now the paper behind us. The paper behind us, the uh, SOP goes to a uh, mill in uh, California. Okay, and just recycled paper. Just recycled paper. Newspapers, notebooks, so. whatever people use yeah. to recycle for. Now the single stream is the stuff that's kind of been, we've been talking about as far as contamination goes. Because I'm guessing these two are pretty clean as far as contamination. Yeah, so when you got a single source uh, type of stream, you know, it typically gets, uh, comes in a lot cleaner. You know, uh, the co-mingled with it being, in, you know, in the old saying, you know, when in doubt, just throw it out, you know, where that's kind of changed, you know, in the, in the atmosphere that we're in now, in the environment, you know, we really want to get the clean product in. Sure. So, so a little bit more contamination uh, gets into there, and that's really where the, most of our contamination's numbers come from is on the single, the single stream, stream. Because in that, in that, in those bales, we see paper, cardboard, plastic. Tin. Tin. Aluminum. Um, and aluminum, I know, just reading up about aluminum, aluminum still is one of the top recycled materials because it's, the aluminum never loses its, yep. its consistency, I guess, so to speak. I mean, its structure can be maintained and put into pop cans forever. Yep. An okay. aluminum can, I'm told, it, in 45 days, it's back on the shelf full of something again. Okay. So. Uh, and that material is shipped down to a um, facility in um, Albuquerque as well, uh, Friedman Recycling. And they'll break the bells open and then they single source, they separate every individual uh, item and bail it up and then ship to their facilities that they work with. Excellent. So Joe, Josh, I mean, now I, I don't know if many people have gotten to see the final product here as far as what it looks like once you know it leaves this facility. I mean, you, you see it when you dump it into the recycle can. We've seen it as it sits out there, fixing to be sorted, sorted, here it is now. Uh, what other things do we need to mention to our viewers out there? I think the, the main thing is uh, everybody's got to understand is the one thing that we do here is we try to take out as many contaminants as possible. Uh, it's not the final step, uh, except for the, the cardboard that's over here or the shredded paper. That is its final stage on where it's going to be processed into something else. Uh, the single stream stuff that's coming in, uh, we take out as many contaminants as we possibly can here uh, and ship it down to Albuquerque. And that's one of the fortunate things that us as residents of Santa Juan County have is having this facility here because if you picture that stuff not being bailed and us having to pay shipping for transferring a bunch of air to Albuquerque, hmm. uh, that helps out with our rates as well. So uh, kudos to Josh and his team because we are sending a full semi load of hardly any dead air space down to Albuquerque that's helping us out with our trash rates right now. So that's one of the big things that uh, this recycling center has really helped out the county with since coming aboard. So. If, uh, if anybody has questions or um, comments regarding waste management, what's the best place for them to, to reach out? So if you have any questions or anything about recycling, uh, again, I'm going to reference our Recycle Often, Recycle Right, R-O-R-R dot com. Uh, that website will have all kinds of uh, crafting ideas on how to reuse stuff, what's recyclable, what is recyclable. Uh, and it even has a place in there for you to make comments to us, and it'll get to either Josh or I as well because it'll ask for your zip code so it knows where to send that information to regarding that. Okay, if you've got questions, let's say you're somebody who's got a disability, you need special assistance in having your trash picked up, where, where should they go for that? So for that, you can call our local office here in Farmington at 505-599-1890. Uh, if you need, we're going, kind of going away from uh, putting handicap stickers on there. We're just marking the account that it's handicapped for security reasons. Um, and if anybody's is handicapped and needs help with their can getting it from their doorstep out to the curb for us uh, just please dial us again at 505-590-1890 and we'll make those arrangements with the driver so the driver knows it's got to get out of the truck and go up to your doorstep grab that and dump it and then bring it back to your doorstep for you all right josh any last comments if anybody has questions as it pertains to what may end up at the facility here um, our number here is 505-386-5003 uh, 
Um, I've, I've worked with uh, commercial accounts in the past and wondering if they send it here, if we're able to take it, and I may be able to give them a different resource and where they could send it. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time today to thank you. provide some information to our viewers. And thank you all for joining us on today's episode of The Mayor's Table. Be sure to check us out in two weeks when we'll be talking to Fire Chief David Burke about the 4th of July and the fireworks. We'll see you then.